This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics. It is day 29 of the 93rd Arkansas General Assembly. Kind of light on the calendars and agendas today, in part because it's a Monday, in other part because the big news was Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin leaving the Arkansas governor's race in 2022. We will get to more of that in blocks two and three of the program. Let's begin with a brief recap of what happened at the Capitol today. After making its way through the Senate and a House committee, Senate Bill 32 failed on the House floor by a 48 to 23 count. The bill would allow liquor stores to deliver alcohol directly to consumers' homes. It was brought about due to the pandemic. It needed 51 votes to pass. We'll see if it comes up again. House Bill 1202 will make its way to the governor's desk shortly. It should make it easier for you to look at a sample ballot online. The bill requires the Secretary of State to post sample ballots on an online site 10 days before each election. And tomorrow there will be a controversial bill on the House education agenda, House Bill 1231, which would prohibit the use of public school funds to teach the 1619 Project. A New York Times series on slavery in the early American period will be debated. Representative Mark Lowry and Senators Mark Johnson and Gary Stubblefield are the lead sponsors. When we come back, we'll crawl through that big announcement that Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin will not be a candidate for Arkansas governor in 2022. Instead, he'll run for Arkansas Attorney General. Columnist John Brummett also joins us for his take right after this. Talk Business and Politics is sponsored in part by Capital Advisors Group and... You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. They say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But if you're looking for something more, Walmart has you covered. We provide quality care, no appointment necessary. Whether you're looking for fresh, healthy groceries to fill your prescription, get a flu shot, or pick up your next pair of glasses, we're standing by with in-store health professionals available across the country to offer patient-first, affordable care whenever you need it. Apple's optional. Monday morning, bright and early, Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin announced he will not be a candidate for Arkansas governor in 2022. Instead, he will run for Arkansas Attorney General. While I believe Arkansans are ready for my message of bold conservative leadership, my conversations with friends and supporters have persuaded me that at this time, I can do more for Arkansas in a different capacity. Today, I am announcing my campaign for Attorney General of Arkansas, Griffin said. Now, Griffin is term limited as Lieutenant Governor, and Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, who is term limited in the Attorney General's office, is still running for Arkansas Governor, as is former White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who is the presumptive leader at this point in time. Now, Rutledge had this to say about Griffin's exit. Tim Griffin is a fierce advocate for Arkansas's conservative values, our military, law enforcement, and rule of law. I wish Tim and his family the best. Sanders had this to say, Tim Griffin has been a strong voice for Arkansas and I look forward to working with him to unite our party and make our state better. I wish Tim and his family the very best. Lots of family well wishes in those statements there. When we come back, John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette offers his take. Stay tuned. Talk Business and Politics is sponsored in part by Impact Management Group and we have a large commitment to our solar for, for good reason. It lowers customers' rates, it's emissions-free. Entergy Arkansas is the largest provider of solar in the state of Arkansas. Utility-scale solar is much more economic for customers. We're going to operate it, we're going to maintain it, we're going to focus on it. That's what we do for a living. We want to continue to find ways to partner with our customers to meet their renewable energy goals. Customers want this, we want to provide it. So our commitment is for the long term. Stepping into the unknown, it can be difficult to find the way. But with the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, obstacles 
become openings. As we have for more than 65 years, we'll continue to light the way, using our knowledge to create new healthcare solutions, giving you the power to shine forward to whatever awaits tomorrow. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. And welcome back to the program. I'm joined now by John Brummett. He's the columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. John, what shall we talk about today? Any big news on the Arkansas political scene? Uh, oh, on the Arkansas political scene. Oh, yeah, I thought we were going to talk about the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the little news that uh, rumors that broke over the uh, weekend that turned into real news early this morning. You were referring, referring, of course, to Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin's announcement that uh, my phrasing, Sarah Huckabee Sanders has scared him right out of the Republican governor's primary, but he's going to slip down and uh, become our attorney general and uh, or run for it and i guess he becomes of course the favorite so that's kind of a big thing i would think and um this is not the first time an arkansas politician has moved over to the ag's office to perhaps wait uh to run for the governor's seat you could say leslie rutledge has done it but so did mike bb so did kind of bill clinton back in the day is there some comparisons there yeah it's it's a common stepping stone it's it's really more of a it's the number two position in state government, uh, Lieutenant Governor being a, a nominally the number two, but uh, it's not. Uh, and if nothing else, Leslie Rutledge has taught us that you can play Attorney General as a highly partisan uh, office uh, if you want to. She's joined with these uh, extreme right uh, other Republican attorneys general around the country to, uh, to, to put our name uh, her name on all manner of uh, right-wing lawsuits against Obamacare, and most infamously, uh, to to try to get the election overturned uh, 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 for for Trump losing all of that. But yeah, you can do some, uh, I would say, damage, or you could have some effect as the uh, as the Attorney General. And it's clearly the uh, it's it's the it's the natural fallback if uh, a poll showed that. Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to destroy you, which is what I think happened to Tim Griffin. Well, let's talk about why you do think Tim Griffin moved uh, out of that race. Obviously, the polling numbers that uh, we, we've heard of for weeks, if not months, that she's been a strong, uh, 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 strong in the polls, particularly with Republican primary voters. That has not changed in more recent polling, uh, according to sources, uh, since the January 6th insurrection riot at the Capitol, maybe even gotten stronger. Um, but then you've also, you've got the ability for Tim Griffin, I believe he can move his $1.8 million that he's raised for governor over into the AG's race. Um, what, what, t talk to me a little bit more about what you think some of the factors were that perhaps went into that decision. Well, uh, this is purely speculative, uh, but the rumors that he was going to change, he was going to drop out were good. And so the adjoining, adjoining rumor that I heard that he had done a little poll, and it was actually, by definition, by purpose, kind of a push poll. And it was, uh, hey, if uh, if the choices were Tim Griffin, who has this much experience in Congress and this much experience in elected office and lieutenant governor and so forth, and Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who has no experience in elected office, for whom would you vote? And even with it pushed that way, I told she got 70%. Uh, that'll tell you, I can't beat this woman. She's a rock star in rural Arkansas. I said, uh, she's Elvis and I'm Carl Perkins, maybe, or Conway Twitty. You know, I, uh, this is just the way it, it is. And so he makes, and then, so when I heard over the weekend, he's looking at his options. He basically had to go away, do, uh, get out of, uh, forget public office maybe not for life, but certainly at a key uh, uh, juncture for him, or, ob there are obviously, Attorney General. It's an important office. It's a full-time office. It's a high-profile office, and the ability to transfer the funds. So, yeah, I mean, I, that was the, he may, he woke up, uh, I guess, this morning or yesterday morning or whatever, and, uh, and, and made the uh, logical decision to stay in politics. Eight years is a long time to wait, but others, others have done it. And uh, he's still a relatively young man. And I'm thinking, I'm wondering if, uh, how long this uh, extreme right wing inertia in Arkansas continues, but Arkansas's ex experience is that inertia is strong. So that's, that's where we are. 
And if you think about it, too, if the polling numbers were accurate, which I have no reason to believe that they were not, then you're talking about having to do some real scorched earth politics, some negative campaigning to try to bring that race to a more competitive level to the point that you might not be welcome at a Lincoln Day dinner <laughs> in parts of Arkansas as negative. It's a, it was simply, yes, it's simply untenable uh, uh, right now in Arkansas. Uh, you, you, you have the only way to, 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 to approach it competitively is to go after Sarah uh, Sanders. And the only way to go after him is on things that would probably not resonate in the current Arkansas uh, rural Republican uh, uh, environment, uh, or would in fact be resented. So so he, he had no choice. I thought uh, Leslie Rutledge would drop out before he did, but as I understand it, uh, she's, uh, she's in it. She's in it to stay apparently. Well, that's what she's saying at the present time. Well, and again, so she's got to develop some of those same tactics or deploy some of those same tactics that a Tim Griffin might have had to do. Let, so that, that is something to consider. But at the other hand, we've had Jim Hendren and Davey Carter kind of flirting with this independent run. Does this right. maybe pull one of them back into a potential GOP primary to offer a more moderate um, candidate versus Sarah Huckabee Sanders or Leslie Rutledge? Well, I'll be, I haven't had a chance to ask either of them or any of their associates, uh, so I can only give you my instinct, which is no, uh, the, uh, that, 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 that the Republican primary is owned by Trump and his Trump acolyte in Arkansas, Sarah Sanders, it just is. Uh, and uh, the, the, some new notion now that, uh, that with a, th a different dynamic, a more moderate person in the Republican primary could get uh, sort of the ASA vote and it could amount to a third and be, and then get into a runoff with uh, Leslie taking some away from uh, Sarah. That might make sense until you got to the runoff, then what happens? You lose 70, 30. I, I just, I, I think their best approach before Griffin's announcement, if they want to run, is to uh, hope for a weak Democrat, which they'll probably get, and, uh, and, and, and try to run a general election independent race going for a third. And I think both of them are thinking that way or they were. Uh, and I personally would not think that that thinking on their part would change. So I'm gonna throw out some national stuff that folds into the Arkansas political scene, but at the same time, it is really more about what's happened in Washington, DC. This week we have the impeachment trial of uh, former President Trump. Last week, we saw um, action taken against Liz Cheney in Congress and Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, in Congress. Kind of assess that state of national Republican politics and, and speak to it at the national level, but then also maybe how that segues to what we are seeing here in Arkansas. I just read a fascinating piece uh, uh, by Politico, or I thought a smart piece, uh, which said the one thing Democrats and Republicans in, in uh, Washington agree on is that Trump needs to be gone. They wish he was out of the picture. They're just going at it different ways. The Democrats are thinking we've got to assure that we've got to triumph on this, on this heinous insurrection and do our best to convict him and or otherwise, if necessary, maybe censure him and, 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 and do something uh, along those lines. And Republicans are saying, we want rid of him too, but our best hope of getting rid of him is not to poke him and his base, which, was, which, which is what would happen if, we would, if, we've, if we've joined Democrats uh, in a vote for conviction. Let's ju they, they just want him to kind of disappear uh, uh, as quietly as possible and hope against hope that that's what they'll get. So, I think that is the dynamic. I think Republicans are uh, cowed by Trump, and I think they're I think they're fearful of poking his base. I think his base is strong in Arkansas. I think the Democrats will make a compelling video presentation, brief and compelling, about uh, the incitement to insurrection. I don't think it'll matter. I think the Republicans will say uh, this is just partisanship and what it's ridiculous and probably unconstitutional, which it isn't to impeach somebody who's already, or to try to run somebody off who's already gone. And all of, the, all of that has an effect in, in the inertia of Arkansas uh, rural conservative dominated politics will be negligible. There will be no effect, uh, except maybe even to strengthen uh, Trump's position. So the dynamic, there was this thought on January 6th, people were saying, what does this do to Sarah? You've got the president of the United States, her meal ticket, 
uh, causing uh, uh, causing a revolution. This is all going to uh, this is all going to backfire badly on her and change the entire dynamic in Arkansas. No, no. Uh, I mean, we, I haven't seen any empirical data on that, but I can tell you, I see no signs or uh, pick up no. My instincts tell me nothing about that uh, Trump popularity has changed. So I think that has no effect. This woman, uh, Green in uh, Georgia, same thing. Nationally, tactically, for the Democrats to make a major issue of her, to in inject her into national celebrity as a right-wing force, uh, may be effective on a national scale because she will define the Republicans as more extreme, maybe. But in the areas such as her district in rural Georgia, around Dalton, Georgia, and in parts of Arkansas, outside Fayetteville and, and Pulaski County, uh, I think the Democrats do not help themselves by making a big deal of her. And I think there's, I think the, I think the attitude is they're, they're just the Democrats are just pitiful partisan, and and and, and they're, they're going to deny her free speech, and they want to deny her people representation. So, people are saying to me, John, why can't Arkansas be like Georgia, and why can't Stacey Abrams or somebody do something here like they can there? First of all, our African American vote is half the size percentage of Georgia's. Second, Georgia has Atlanta. People from all over the country are moving in droves. Uh, professional people. Uh, uh, highly educated people with moderate or progressive political attitudes. None of that's happening in Arkansas. Nothing much changes in Arkansas on a short-term basis. And I don't think that's the case here. I think that's the case here. There's a little bit of that progressive growth in Northwest Arkansas, but it has not uh, materialized in, uh, at the voting uh, precinct level yet. Well, you know, the, the there's a, yeah, it, it's happening, and, and Benton County is, is creeping a little bit less right. That's all that's happening right now. All right. He is the Tom Brady of Arkansas politics. He's John Brummett with the Arkansas Democrat <laughs> Gazette. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. This is my seventh Super Bowl victory. <laughs> it was a great day here. Good all to right. talk to you, buddy. You too. Thank all you, right. John. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. That's all for the program. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time.